Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the CPQ Specialist Salesforce Certification. Now if you are on the Salesforce Trailhead website under the Salesforce Admin role, you can scroll down here and you can see the CPQ Specialist. That's what we're going to be covering today. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I put new content out each week. And if you find this informative, make sure you hit the like button so I know to make more content like this in the future. And we're just going to go jump straight into this. Now the CPQ CPQ specialist role uh, is designed for individuals who have experience implementing Salesforce CPQ. This credential is a great way to demonstrate skills and knowledge in designing, building, and implementing quoting flows with Salesforce CPQ. Now I already have kind of the breakdown page here and both the links for these pages are in the description of the video if you would like to check them out for yourself. Now take a look at some of the details here. So the audience, the Salesforce CPQ specialist has experience with Salesforce CPQ platform terminology and can troubleshoot and solve basic platform issues. Generally, uh, this is for people that has one year of experience in a CPQ specialist role. The Salesforce certified it's a CPQ specialist candidate has experience Salesforce solution and has skills and knowledge of the following concepts. Configuration bundles, features, options, option constraints, configuration attributes and product rules. Configure price rules using lookup objects and formulas and understand quote calculation sequence and quote line pricing field. Give a scenario, identify the appropriate pricing method. Configure a dynamic quote template using quote terms, lines, columns, templates sections and template con and template content and then also configure user permissions record types page layouts and field sets just like they said some of the basic knowledge of setting up in Salesforce and then a candidate for this exam will likely need assistance with block with discount schedule nested bundles parent quote terms advanced grouping of quote template line items advanced quote template topics and a candidate for this exam is not expected to know or do the following CPQ plugins, custom template con content, target URL and custom actions, Salesforce billing, legacy data handling, and such. So typically job roles of the Salesforce certified CPQ specialist candidate may include IT sales op, technical architect, product manager, pricing manager. So the exam is 60 multiple choice questions and five are unscored. So 65 total. You have 105 minutes to take the exam. Passing score is 65%, $200 for the registration and a retake fee of $100. And like I always say, I always think it's great if you can pass it on the first try, save your some money and of course it can be online or in person I always suggest taking the online proctored I've done that for both of my exams that I've taken and it was super easy and I would highly suggest it so no hard copy or online materials may be referenced during the exam of course and there's no prerequisites for this but course attendance highly recommended and then they have like a little note section here talking about the questions and the exams so the recommended training is uh, the trail mix prepare for yourself Salesforce CPQ specialist credential. And then they have to continue developing your Salesforce skill. Visit Trailhead Academy to enroll in an expert led course. They are offering more and more of those for the expert led courses. That is an option for you if you would like to do that. Now, the exam outline. This is the uh, bread and butter of all this. What is in the exam? So 23% is a CPQ platform. What does that mean? Design and configure and troubleshoot price rules using lookup objects, formula fields to meet business requirements, utilize out of the box and custom permission record types and field sets, given a uh, business process, demonstrate knowledge of the CPQ data flow, set up CPQ for localization and multiple currencies for international customers and users. And it's got a few more here. So that's a very large section of the exam. In fact, that is the largest section. So you want to make sure if you're taking this exam, you fully understand the CPQ platform. And we have bundle configurations coming in at 17% of the exam, another big section. So given a scenario, set up a bundle structure to meet business requirements. Given a scenario, set up product rules to meet business requirements. 17%, another big section there. Then it only has two bullet point items, so you want to make sure you understand how to build these bundles, what customers need, what they don't need, and how to best suit their needs. Pricing comes in at 16%. Given a scenario, identify the appropriate pricing strategy. 
Um, that means discount schedules, block prices, contract prices, etc. Given a scenario, determine expected pricing outcomes. We have quote templates coming in at 7%, and that's given a scenario, set up a quote template to meet business requirements. Product selection is 7% as well. Given a scenario, use search filters, field sets, and custom actions to enable product selection and configuration. Orders, contracts, amendments, and renewals, 15%, the fourth biggest section in the exam. Demonstrate understanding of data required to generate orders and contracts. Understanding of how to generate renewal and amendment quotes. Given a scenario, recommend what, when to use orders, contracts, and subscriptions. And we got our products at 11%. Demonstrate how to set up price, uh, price books, products, and price book. And then we have demonstrate how product catalog setup impacts overall CPQ data flow. And the very last section here coming at 4% approval, select and set up native advanced approvals to meet business requirements. Now that is the smallest section. It seems pretty easy, but it could be tricky, but for four points, I wouldn't stress it too much. I would be focusing on the bigger section if you're looking at testing strategies to get your certification. And we have the code of conduct here. Make sure you know don't cheat on your exam, follow the code. And then it also has a section on how to maintain your Salesforce certification. It's like most Salesforce exams. You have to do kind of remedial trailhead courses to keep your exam and don't let it expire. I would highly recommend not letting it expire. But that kind of covers the Salesforce CPQ specialist certification. If you found this informative, make sure you hit that like button. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video.